the election is just around the corner and the candidates are both working hard to finish strong. Here with us is Andrew Rickey, vice president of Levick, to shed some light on the workings of life on the campaign trail. Andrew, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. So what is Levick? Levick is a full service uh, communications and public affairs firm that helps companies, organizations, uh, different types of clients uh, achieve their communications goals, whether it's financial, we do a lot of work with the crisis space, a lot of public affairs helping companies uh, deal with issues before Congress or uh, the regulatory legislative branch, things like that. Oh wow, so you're pretty busy all year round. Yeah, we, we stay pretty busy over there. So you do have experience on the campaign trail yourself? Yeah, actually, um, you know, before I started working in the agency life, I worked on a couple campaigns in, uh, and in politics. I worked for uh, two different members on the Hill and on their campaigns, you know, doing uh, mostly field and communications work. Have you ever traveled with the campaign? Oh yeah, I've, well, I mean, both of them were in congressional districts. Uh, okay. So, you know, we've, I, I traveled around different uh, districts. Uh, you know, one was really big, one was a little smaller, but you know, I've traveled around with the member that I worked with. Is it something you'd want to do again? I, I can only imagine that it's super intense. You know, it's, it, it can be pretty busy. You know, you're, you, don't, you don't sleep a lot. You know, you go for <laughs> months sleeping, probably about four hours a night, if that. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you spend a lot of time on the road and you get, to, you get very close with uh, the candidate. So we're a couple weeks out from election day now. What do you think the candidates are doing right now? Well, right now, you know, they've spent the past year. This has been one of the, arguably one of the longest campaign cycles in, uh, that, in history. It that feels we like can two know. years almost. Oh, yeah. They started, they started right after the last election was over. Um, and so the whole time they've been, they've been getting out there trying to frame their opponent, get their messaging out there, really show people what they stand for. But now, you know, this close, once you get about three weeks out into the election, it gets into full um, get out the vote mode. Because mm -hmm. in, the, in the end, you know, a, a campaign or uh, an election is really just a, at its heart a numbers game. Um, and so it's about getting to the magic number, which is, uh, you know, 50% plus one right. of the votes. So, you know, you spend a lot of time, uh, you know, doing a lot of work on the back end, identifying who your voters are, you know, figuring out what states you really need to be competitive in. And then uh, now it's just about turnout. And with a lot of states doing early voting and vote by mail, you know, you can do a lot of that stuff mm -hmm. before Election Day. So it really minimizes the amount of pressure that you have Come, uh, come election day. And that actually seems to be one of Donald Trump's tactics right now is to try to get voters to stay home because he's thinking that his base will be the one to actually show up and vote and therefore possibly winning him the election. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a real, uh, a real th there have been a lot of people who have written that voter suppression mm -hmm. is one of the things that, uh, that might help his campaign and they're speculating that that's one of his tactics. Um, but, you know, really both candidates have a really energized and fired up base. Um, and then it's, you know, the people in the middle who, you know, may be disinclined to go to the polls because, you know, a lot of times you see uh, whenever there's rain or snow on election day in certain areas, the turnout becomes lower just by things like weather. Right, right. So what, when, when you hear on the news, you hear uh, journalists and some surrogates talking about ground game. What is that? The ground game is exactly the get out the vote effort. Uh, okay. And, you know, leading up like for grassroots. months. grassroots. Yeah, grassroots. Leading up for, uh, you know, to election day there will be a whole staff of field organizers and volunteers that just are calling uh, every voter in uh, a district, in a state, mm -hmm. in an area, and figuring out, you know, who are your strong supporters, who are your strong opponents, and, you know, who's kind of in the middle. That's what we call the persuasion uh, universe. Okay. And then so, you know, if you're, if you're undecided, then you are going to get pummeled with mail, with ads. There seems you know, to be a lot of those stuff. this year. Exactly, exactly. Um, and so come election day, you're hoping that you've moved some of those undecided voters into uh, your candidate's camp, and then it's just getting them to the polls. And you'll see, you know, a lot of people will have volunteers who just spend all day on election day picking people up, driving them to the polls, and driving really? them back. Oh, yeah, it's a huge... I had no idea that stuff. they would actually do that. Now, I'm surprised they're even allowed to do that. Oh, yeah, you're allowed to. If you're a volunteer, you know, there will be less of people who go, look, I really love to vote, but I'm not going to be able to make it. You know, I, I don't have a car, you know, uh, I have to work. And they'll say, look, we'll pick you up on your lunch break. We'll take you to the polls and we'll get you back, you know. Oh, wow. A lot of, you see that with a lot of elderly uh, yeah, uh, voters, voters, you know, who, who can't get out of the house on their own. You know, campaigns will organize buses to pick them up, you know, if you're at a senior center uh, or what have you. So, you know, this year we're seeing the electoral map possibly changing and from, from how it ended up in years past. How do you see it changing this year? Well, you know, exactly. Every year uh, or every campaign, the, you start off with a, you know, you start off with a, a number of states that are firmly in your right. camp, firmly in your opponent's camp, and you really, you know, it's not a necessarily a great use of resources to, uh, to dedicate 
to those states who, you know, you know where they're going to go. Right. And there's always, you know, the battleground states. Well, this year, you know, the, so a lot of the battleground states are the same, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Florida. North Carolina's um, North new. North Carolina's new. Arizona, Nevada. Arizona, Arizona, Arizona's definitely a big one this year. And you saw last week, um, you know, uh, Michelle Obama, mm -hmm. uh, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Chelsea Clinton have all been in Arizona to try to flip that and get those electoral bates or electoral uh, votes. Right. And, you know, a big part of why that is is just because of the how different of a candidate Donald Trump is and about how he's doubled down on a lot of the attacks on various demographic groups, wow. like women, uh, Latinos, Hispanics, uh, so, different groups like really that. really quickly, because we, we only have a few seconds left, how does the presidential campaign affect the down ballot? Yeah, so, you know, this is, if you would ask someone six months ago, who's going to be in control of the Senate uh, mm -hmm. in the next Congress? You know, everybody would have said, you know, there's no chance that Democrats will be able to take back the Senate. Right. Now, because of a lot of the news that's coming out and a lot of the ways that, uh, you know, a lot of Donald Trump's candidacy, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of states that wouldn't have been in play are now in play. And you're seeing a big play for control of the Senate and even control of the House, although that's a little bit less uh, likely. I could talk to you forever. Thank you so much for joining no us, Andrew. Thank you, Bobby. We'll be right back in a Thank second. You. Stay connected to the Jet Set from wherever you are in the world. Download the Jet Set app today and fly with us via social media. You may even land on the show.